Hey family, and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So, a few days ago, I did the 10 tips on why she fell in love with him. And so today, I'm going to go ahead and do the 10 tips on why he fell in love with her. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump in. First tip is that you made him feel very comfortable to be around, to be with, and just made him be able to let down his mask and just be himself around you. So he felt very comfortable with you. The second thing is that you are very easy to be around yourself. Like there is really not too much drama. There aren't too many arguments or anything like that. No, um, not so much pushback from you or basically giving a whole bunch of mouth. <laughs> you know, you made him feel really comfortable, but you're also easy to be around yourself. So that's number two. Number three, you actually shut your mouth and actually listen when he's speaking. You don't try to finish his sentences. You don't try to, you know, basically cut him off. You don't try to uh, listen to answer. You actively listen. So you seriously listen to what he has to say. So you make him feel comfortable. You make him actually feel heard as well. Number four, because you are able to listen to what he's saying, you actually are understanding who he really is as a man. And so he doesn't really have to um, feel like, oh my God, I got to break this down for her. I have to explain every detail to her. He feels that you are starting to understand him as a man without his mask, the real him. Number five, you actually encourage him whenever he comes to you about a specific goal, aspiration, or just something that is just on his mind. He's thinking he hasn't done anything about it as of yet, but he's telling, he's sharing these things with you like, okay, I think that I want to do X, Y, and Z. And you're like, you know what, go ahead and do it. Like, really, go ahead and do it. Um, honestly, I just have a short story about this. My fiance actually told me that I am the only woman who has absolutely supported everything that he's wanted to do because I think that that's very important even if I don't feel like it's something that he should do right I have to support him because he has to see that it's going to work or it's not going to work and who am I to say that it's not going to work I don't know because God didn't give that to me he didn't give me that dream or goal or aspiration he gave it to my fiance and so I don't want to deter him or make him feel like he can't do it yeah, I'm, I am his number one cheerleader. So, yeah, you could do it. Let's 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 see what's going on. Let's see what's popping. Let's see what's cracking. You got this. These six things that you actually were a challenge for him. <laughs> you did not just, you know, give him your number and then called and called and called. You basically let him do the chasing, or you um, let him make the dates or whatever it is. You were a challenge for him him you did not go along with the masses as far as what he was used to dealing with as far as the women go you didn't throw yourself at him you let like I said you let him do the chasing you let him do the calling you let him do the um, planning of the dates etc you were the dainty beautiful woman that you are and you let him pursue you so you were a challenge and he liked that you didn't always go along with everything that he wanted to do if you didn't feel like doing something that day you said, you know what, you go ahead and enjoy yourself. I'm going to sit this one out. And he liked that about you because you got your own mind. Number seven, you actually hold him accountable for the crap that he says, the crap that he does. You know, when he's out of pocket, you don't just let him stay out of pocket. You, you call him on his stuff. And so you hold him accountable. If he said that he wasn't going to smoke, then you didn't, you, next time you see him smoking or gambling or drinking or whatever it is that he said that he was going to stop doing, you hold him accountable like, okay, um, you know, what happened with X, Y, and Z? Or you said that you weren't going to do such and such, but you're doing it now you know you, you call them in the moment like when it's actively happening not something that you have to think about and then don't bring it up for weeks at a time and then say well you know when you get ticked off well you said that you weren't gonna do X, Y, and Z, and then last week you did it or two weeks ago or whatever it is that the comment that the argument is gonna go that you decided to bring it up then no you didn't do that you called him on it right then and there and you basically are making him think you're making him think 
Can y'all hear that baby outside? Anywho. <laughs> Uh, number eight went into number seven. I just said it. It's basically you call him on this crap, <laughs> which which goes into you holding him accountable. So I already said that. Number nine is very important. You do not expect him to be a mind reader. You actually tell him what you want. You actually tell him what you need. You actually tell him when he has done something wrong that you did not like. You spoke up. You told him. You let him know. And he likes that because he's not a mind reader. If a date comes around, a special date for you comes around and he forgot or something, you you definitely spoke up about it. That way the next time that day comes around, he, he more than likely won't forget because you spoke up. And that's what a relationship is all about. They're not going to get everything right in the beginning because what works for you, the last person that he was with, it probably didn't work for. And then on and on and on. You are completely different from anybody else. So you have to speak up and be able to say what you need, say what you want. That way your partner understands it and actually can supply your need your needs. But they have to know. So that's what you did. You spoke up. You let him know. You didn't just let him be a mind reader and get it wrong. Number 10, anytime he says that he needs space, you give it to him. There is no argument, no why me, no how come we were supposed to, no, you just say, okay, life is such it is, and you did your own thing. You gave him all the space that he needed. You didn't call, you didn't text, you didn't check up on him, because one thing's for certain, once you start calling and checking up on him, he is not able to miss you. You have to let him miss you because men fall for you once you're not in their company. If we're always in their company all the time and they get, <clears throat> excuse me, they get to see us, they get to hang with us all the time, they're getting used to us, they're not really missing us. So if he say that he needs space, you give him all the space that he needs and you continue on with your life doing what you need to do. And that's in any stage of your relationship. Because remember, as I talked about before, men pull away at multiple stages within your relationship. That's just something that they do. So when they say that they need the space, give it to them. You do you. Trust me, he'll come back a lot faster if you give him the space that he needs. Versus you feeling like you need to call, check up, why me, you know, make a big deal about everything. Don't do that, honey. Don't do that. This is why he fell in love with the girl, because she gave him a space. All right, ladies, I hope that these 10 tips have absolutely helped you out. Definitely take them into consideration, because I know you can't really see my shirt today, but uh, I am creating happy, healthy, romantic relationships. But also, I want you to take the knowledge in and apply it to your life, because knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is better. You have to apply the knowledge that you're receiving here, okay? I will absolutely see you ladies and gentlemen tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.